Mike's working? All right, we're calling this meeting to order. I apologize, we were waiting for a couple people that were stuck in traffic. Yes. We're all ready? And so I call a, a meeting to order, the flag salute. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And please remain standing for a moment of silence for all those in harm's way and all of our um, military overseas. Thank you. The notice uh, requirements of the Open Public Meetings Act of the State of New Jersey have been satisfied by the inclusion of the date, time, and place of this meeting in the notice of regular meetings adopted by this board on January 8th, 2024. Such schedule and notice of meetings is posted at the Municipal Building, the Mount Olive Public Library, the Board of Education Office, and the six schools. It was submitted to the daily record for publication on January 9th, 2024, and was filed with the clerk of Mount Olive Township on January 9th, 2024. I direct that this announcement be entered into the minutes of this meeting. Mrs. Aquino? Here. Mrs. Fenton? Here. Mrs. Figuera? Here. Mrs. Fitzgerald? Here. Mrs. Melendez? Here. Wow. Mrs. O'Neill? Here. Mr. Orzillo? Here. Mr. Strelacci? Here. Mrs. Narcis. I'm here. And can I have um, Ms. Men uh, Menendez um, move the approval of the minutes 2.1 through 2.2? .2? Yes. Oh. <laughs> I present a motion uh, for approval of the minutes 2.1 to 2.2. Second. You ready for roll Mrs. Melendez? Yes. Mrs. O'Neill? Yes. Mr. Orzillo? Yes. Mr. Strelacci? Yes. Mrs. Aquino? Yes. Mrs. Fenton? Yes. Mrs. Figuera? Yes. Mrs. Fitzgerald? Yes. Mrs. Narcisse? Yes. And do we have any student liaison reports? And then we'll move on to our presentations. I'm breaking everything, sorry. Okay. Good evening. Um, a lot has gone on these past month at the high school. To start off with our seniors, our cap and gown orders are due this Thursday. I can't believe it's almost here. That's crazy. Um, a reminder email has been sent out to our seniors and their parents, um, as well as obviously graduation. Right before that, prom is coming up on March, on May 23rd. Prom co contracts have been made available in Ms. Shaw's office, and they're going on sale April 8th, 9th, 11th, and 12th during lunch, as well as after school on the 11th. Outside guests have their own contract, which are in yellow. Um, every guest is, um, Every guest attending must fill out a contact, as well as the $95 tickets per person, um, and checks are made out to the Board of Education. Um, some thank yous we'd like to give um, for our district science fair on March 16th. All the district school um, organizations that volunteered as judges and were part of the whole exhibit um, really helped the program go very smoothly. Um, when it came to our rising curriculum fair on March 12th, March 20th, around 300 people with rising freshmen and their parents. Um, what a great night. Um, part of the transition program that was founded for the middle school to the high school, um, it's a little scary for them, so we like to like give them a little seat preview. Um, in April, eighth graders will be coming over to the high school, actually, themselves, doing a little tour around the school, and more information will be given to them. Um, we like to thank our junior ROTC program for presenting the colors, our cho chorus for signaling the national anthem, and our ASL for signing the um, Star Spangled Banner. Um, crazy month. To start off with our Rock of Ages musical, I mean, amazing. Like, I went to go see that show, blown away. You really forget you're at a high school show. Um, when it comes to the sound, lighting, music, dancing, acting, singing, those kids did it all. I mean, a great night. Um, and we would like to congratulate our seniors. Um, even though they have taken their last bow at the high school, they have definitely left their mark 
on the Mount Olive Theater program. Um, when it comes to our robotics, um, they hosted the robotics district competition and headed out to Warren Hills to compete, um, did a great job. When it comes to our NAHS, hosted its annual invitational on March 12th uh, with two dozen schools participating. Sorry, there's a back, I just forgot. Um, when it comes to, uh, when it came to our um, NAHS annual invitational, um, one of our own students, um, Laszlo, um, had won first place, which was a great job. Um, our district participated in a chorus, uh, Choose to Include Spirit Week, which highlights inclusion in our school district and spreading the inclusion through the town. Um, this was held by our Best Buddies and Unified program. Um, our GEA -G -E Women's Summit in the library this past Friday um, really highlighted the important women and their contribution to different parts of uh, the society throughout history. Yeah, great job by a lot of clubs. Okay, and now for some important information pertaining to our sophomores and juniors. Information was recently sent out through email to all sophomore students regarding class rings. So sophomore parents should definitely be on the lookout for these emails from their students if they hope to purchase one. As for the junior class, a save the date was sent out through email again about our upcoming Share the Keys event on May 2nd. This is a mandatory program for all rising seniors if they hope to enter the parking lottery next year and attendance is mandatory from both students and their parents or guardians. Um, more details about this will come out in a letter after spring break. Now onto some more exciting news coming up. As we speak, the annual Key Club Easter Egg Hunt is being held at the high school. This welcomes Mount Olive kids up to age 10 for games, crafts, and of course, a classic egg hunt. Looking forward a couple weeks, we are hosting our annual Community Awareness Night on April 17th from 6.30 to 8.30. This is the event where seniors who have been working over the quarter in their health classes to create projects with their peers are able to present them to their parents and other students. And um, these projects touch on different topics and spread awareness to the community. The very next evening, the World Language Honor Society as well as the International Student Organization are holding their international extravaganza, which is a great event. Members of the community can come out to attend this fun event and then stay at the school later that night for the Rock and Roll Academy concert. In regards to sports, all of our winter sports have officially been concluded with all of our teams ending on great notes. And just like that, spring sports are all underway, some even nearing their first competitions. We recently hosted our first ever flag football jamboree with our girls winning the entire event. It was really great performance. Another first, our school started up their very own boys volleyball team, which has had a lot of people come out and try out for, and they've had a handful of scrimmages already. So that's another really great thing in our sports community. We wish all our spring athletes good luck in their upcoming competitions, and we really hope to see parents and board members come out and support. Now, I know our students have heard a lot about this um, reunification drill coming up, and obviously you guys know about it as well, but for any parents listening, um, this is something that involves not only the students, but our parents have to get involved as well. So our reunification drill will be taking place at Roxbury High School. Right now we have 83 students signed up, which is a great number. Um, definitely want more though. The more, the better. Um, so we be taking uh, place on April 9th from 12 to 2.40 so students can get back if their athletes get back to their sports and after school clubs. Um, the uni reunification drill is a planned exercise designed to simulate the process of reuniting students with their families following an emergency event. It is essential for both parents and students to understand the procedure involved in order to ensure a smooth and efficient reunification process during the high st stress situations. So the Roxbury High School has actually done this at our school, um, but now we're going to them. So this is helping not only our district and Roxbury prepare for this situation, but we have other schools coming in to actually watch, which is just amazing. I mean, to be able to watch it live and really prepare is not only helping our parents, because you know we can only pray for the best, but have to prepare for the worst. Um, so I think the more students that can sign up for this will definitely help our district and our community. 
Um, at this time, any questions? Anyone have any questions? Yes. Great job, as always. Thank you. 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 Over to our superintendent report. At this time, I'd like to invite Ms. Colleen Souffle, our athletic director, for some um, recognitions of our winter sports, as well as an opportunity for our Raid Athletic Council to speak. Awesome. Thank you so much. Um, certainly appreciate the opportunity to come to the Board of Education and uh, offer the opportunity to provide information and sh showcase some of the great things that the athletic program has accomplished. Um, a special thanks to Gabby. Um, she's so mature, right? Like even in her speech, she said, those kids, like <laughs> the Rock of Ages, like those kids did so great. But uh, even speaking of the Rock of Ages, right? Uh, I barely know Jody Bosch, but after I went over and gave her the biggest hug, I was so moved. It was incredible. So this has just been an awesome, real weekend for Mount Olive, right? And I'm glad that we have the opportunity here to celebrate tonight um, for some of our winter sports and to uh, offer some information of things that we're doing in the athletic program. So first thing, what I'd like to do is uh, we're going to uh, highlight the girls' winter track team. Now, one of the one of the some of our programs, right, we, they're not on campus. So we've got to get on the bus, we've got to travel. Uh, the girls track team this winter did an incredible job. As a matter of fact, they did so much traveling. The majority of their travel is actually in New York, right? So these kids are coming home. Uh, they're the best of the best. The better you do, the more you get to do. So their season is really, really long. And sometimes they're not pulling into their driveway at home until 11, 11.30 at night. And then turning around, living up to the standard of a Marauder athlete and getting to school the next day. So I've always given them so much credit for the extra effort that they do. And I'm just so impressed with their back to back to back to back success. Um, this year they are back to back group uh, won uh, North Bond Group 3 champions. Last year, they were back-to-back -back county champions. So the coaching staff is doing an incredible job. Our head coach, Coach uh, Siraj Ziad, he is an alumni of Mount Olive, so he's uh, extra proud and, and, and amazing at what he does. And he's just created a tradition of excellence at Mount Olive, and we're super proud of him. Um, he's been here for 14 years, so we're going to bring Coach up to introduce his his athletes in his program. Good evening, everyone. I'm thankful that you're having us here tonight. Um, as she mentioned, it's my 14th year here. I'm also a Mount Olive alumni. I do want to uh, mention our coaching staff. Um, I, I want to thank them first uh, for everything, the, the time that they put in. She mentioned 11 o'clock, 11.30. Um, our sectional championship, we actually didn't get back until 2.30 AM because Whoa. it was a late night. Um, there was a delay in the earlier meets and, you know, because of the weather. So, you know, we do travel a lot, and she mentioned that. But our coaching staff, um, Kevin Person, he's our head boys coach. I'm the head girls coach officially, but we also have uh, Clyde Alston, who's a Mount Olive alumnus. Um, we have Kathleen Cerizo. We have uh, Coach Joe Hain, who actually is here as well, and also Marquis Smallwood, who's also alumnus. Uh, so we have three MO alumni on our staff. So we're thankful to bring people back. Um, but before I get into the details of our, of our season, I do want to acknowledge that we have an up-and-coming rising group that does acknowledge, needs to be acknowledged as well. Um, so I want to talk just briefly about our freshmen so and for sophomores. At Frost Soft Relays, um, our freshman boys took first overall for the county, our sophomore boys took first overall for the county, and then our combined group, the girls are more combined for Frost Soft uh, because of enrollment and um, the amount of numbers, but they took first overall in the Frost Soft Relays as well. Um, then when we got the freshman sophomore championships, our freshmen took um, fifth overall, but our sophomore boys took second overall. Those are the individual championships, and they add those points up. And I'm sorry, those are our girls, our freshman girls and our freshman boys, um, respectively, um, our freshman girl, sophomore girls, respectively. Our boys overall took um, second for freshmen and our and uh, first in for the sophomore boys. So you know, I do want to acknowledge that our group is up, still up and coming and we do have, they don't get enough acknowledgement for what they do, but they do well amongst their own age group. Um, 
I do want to take a moment to um, acknowledge the fact that we did have some kids make it all the way to Meet of Champs. We had two girls make it to New Jersey State Meet of Champs, which is held in Staten Island in Ocean Breeze, and also uh, two, three, five, and five girls make it to the Meet of Champs, and also five kids make it for national. So we drove up to Boston uh, a few weekends ago where uh, three of our varsity kids competed in championship events, multiple events for a few of them, and two of our freshmen qualified in their categories for freshmen as well at nationals in Boston. It was a great trip. We had a great experience and they all had fun from what I could tell and we look forward to doing that often more often but um, without further ado I do want to acknowledge our boys that have some accomplishments here first um, I'm speaking on behalf of coach person he couldn't be here tonight he had a newborn about a little over a week ago so I'm happy to represent for him first boy that I'd like to acknowledge is a senior. Um, he broke our pole vault indoor school record with a height of 12.6 and also qualified for the media champions. That young man is Christian Artori. an outdoor season and we look forward to more records coming. Our next is only a junior and he managed to break a very old 600 meter indoor school record um, and that is Divyesh Naravula. And also he's also a junior captain on the team as well. Our third boy has been a captain and has multiple school records that he had taken this year. Um, the 300 meter school record uh, he had broken and he placed second in Morris County. Um, and also the 400 meter indoor school record, he placed second in group three overall, that's the entire group three in the state, and placed third in the state sectional. And also qualified, at, he's one of the qualifiers for nationals in the 60 meter and the 200 meter sprints. Michael Del Gallego Fico. ask the boys to stay up here and I hope you can all take a group picture with the girls when we have to announce them. I'd like to take a moment to uh, acknowledge our girls. Uh, we asked some varsity girls and we had quite a few here show up today. Um, I'll start and when they come up you just get your awards girls and stay up here. Um, senior Captain Sydney Dugan. Senior, Michaela Eason. <laughs> Sophomore, Emily Volpe. <laughs> Senior Captain, Ava Welch. Senior Captain Kamala Williams. <laughs> so, uh, freshman, Faith Dressel. <laughs> Faith, is one of, Faith is one of our 400 meter freshmen that qualified for nationals. Sophomore, who also placed in our, at our sectional championship in the 3200 meter, Nicole Malter. <laughs> Sophomore, Jayla Roberts. Future leader for our program, Keely Jarvis. Jarvis. Uh, 
I'll take a, minute, a moment. There's two girls that I didn't mention because they have quite a few accomplishments that I do want to acknowledge at the end here so everyone could applaud, hold the applause. One couldn't make it, but she's absolutely worthy, noteworthy of mentioning tonight. Unfortunately, she couldn't make it here. The first is Morgan Ryerson. Um, she broke the, not only the school record, but also the Morris County 55 meter record, which was, ha which was uh, a time of 802, and she was New Jersey ranked number two in the state, obviously, and she uh, ended up being ranked US number 13 in that event. Wow. She won the Eastern States Championships. She also won the Morris County Championships. State sectional championship was second in group three and also qualified for the meet of champions. But at that also at that same state sectional that the girls won, she also won high jump, which makes her a well-rounded athlete. And she was a 60 meters um, national qualifier at nationals. She qualified and she placed. She ranked 23rd in the nation in the 60 meter hurdles. Um, she couldn't make it tonight, but she's definitely worth, noteworthy of mentioning Morgan Ryerson. And the last, and definitely not least, is um, our senior captain as well, McCourt Morgan Woods as well, Natasha Redman. Natasha holds records in multiple events, five to be exact in our school. She holds the 55 meter record, which she plays second in group three. She's a state sectional champion. She has the state sectional meet record, which was held by our Olympian Katora Orgy. She broke that record, which is nice. Um, she has the indoor school record, which was ranked number six in New Jersey this year and also was a Morris County Championship record as well with her 55 meter run. In the 300 meter, she has the school record and she was also a, um, she also broke Couture Orgy's re previous record. In the 200 meter, she has not only the indoor school record, but she has a, a 200 meter county, Morris County record of the time of 24.55. She also has our school 400 meter record where she was a state sectional champion in that event. She was second in group three in that event and placed third in the state in that event as well. And she also is our 500 meter record qualifier and qualified for nationals up in Boston at New Balance Nationals in the 60 meter and 200 meter record. The senior captain, Natasha Redman. Very thankful to have uh, many of these athletes here. Uh, Natasha is actually attending Cornell in the fall, and Morgan Ryerson is attending George Mason, and another girl that we could that couldn't make it tonight, Morgan Summer. She's attending Monmouth, all on track scholarship and athletic money as well. So we have a lot of athletes here as well. We have more that are selecting their schools. Kamala is chosen to go to Ramapo, and she hopes to run away there as well. Michael Del Diego Fico is going to be choosing his school, and Christian Artori is going to be competing in track and field at Salisbury University next year. So we're excited for all our track and field athletes and their accomplishments. If you guys can give them a round of applause. Could you imagine running the f four no. feet, right? Just four feet. Could you imagine running and then and then throwing? And Ms. then Colleen Souffle, you saw my athletic prowess. I did. I'm yesterday. pretty sure. That was amazing. Oh, I did. <laughs> Mrs. Wilkie's here, and uh, she just got back from physical therapy. <laughs> her day today. I was the appointment before her, so. Yeah. Oh, really? It's super impressive. Um, so many school records. Yes. Mrs. Jones, we're going to have to get some new record boards. Sorry, so. <laughs> good problem to have. Put in the PO. Put it, yep, good problem to have. All right, so the second, the second thing I'd like to do is um, share with you a new program that we've started, a new club uh, program. I'm not sure. Uh, I like to call it more of a program than a club because um, it's really super intentional. Um, Dr. Banji and I had many conversations stemming even from last year. 
as a new athletic director, this is my um, two and a half years now, we really recognize the need for uh, established, systemic, intentional culture building. And part of that process was really about getting in with the athletes, having a conversation, a vulnerable, um, intentional conversations with them, figuring out the things that would make Mount Olive better and make the athletic program really thrive in ways that, um, you know, are, are, are excelling, excelling beyond. And um, I'm very, my philosophy really in education is I'm not, I'm not a cookie cutter. Um, we, we designed a program based on a national program and then we took it in ourselves and made it our own. It's called RAID, and the kids will tell you a little bit more about it. But it really is about connecting with athletes who are connecting with the community who are recognizing things that we can be doing in order to better evolve and develop our student athletes. And, you know, we kind of piloted it this year, and I have to say that these student athletes took the ball and, and they ran with it. They were awesome. And to be a part of it, again, part of some of the things that I believe is I'm not, I understand that there's a time and a place for resume building, right? But, but they're not a part of that. And I made it a little more difficult for them to be a part of something because I really wanted people to be around me that were invested in the community. And I have a group of student athletes that really rose to the top. They did exceptional, exceptional uh, extra things to be a part of this. As a matter of fact, not only the pretty lengthy application process, but they also had to take a class, right? They had to take a class to be a part of this. And they'll tell you a little more about that. Um, I'm so proud of them. We meet, we, lately we've been meeting once a week in my office and they're burning up their lunch and their tag time. So they're awesome. I'm so proud of them and the things that they've done. DVS is here too. He's back in the, in the back row with his track. He's gonna come up. Um, I'd like to introduce um, three student athletes. Um, Micah Jones, who today was just honored as the NJSIA Student Athlete of the Year and gave him that information today. So Micah Jones, come on up. Uh, Izzy Colbus, who is um, the only actual person in the history of Mount Olive that has played football in two seasons. So Izzy, come on up. We know Natasha Redmond, who is um, just an incredible student slash athlete. Um, she's an incredible human being, and um, she's just made our program just take off. So Natasha Redmond. I'm going to present to you a little bit of the things that they've been doing for the last two or three months. Thank you, Miss Sufly, for the warm welcome. I'm Izzy, this is Natasha and Micah. So basically, SAC is a national student organization or a student athlete advisory committee, and it's bridging the gap between athletes, uh, parents, coaches, and schools. And we kind of took that big idea of this national organization and kind of like made it smaller into our little own model of community, and we created RAID, which is revitalizing athletes in our district it's kind of a play because we're marauders and pirates raid. So. Oh, I like it. <laughs> Clever. Yeah. Um, just a quick who we are. We're student athletes who are committed uh, to community enrichment, and we aspire to enhance Mount Olive High School and really just leave a lasting positive impact in all that we do. So we wanted to go into a little bit more detail about what exactly we do. Um, so we're made up of a pretty small group of people. It's nine please nine people plus Ms. Souffle. Um, and so we try to have our meetings weekly with our executive board in order to just be more productive. 
Our main goal is to build leadership skills. So as Souffle was talking about earlier, there's a few things that we had to do in order to get on this executive board. Uh, so we had to get the certification from the NFHS. And so that was like a like an hour and a half, two hour class that we took that uh, just went over different leadership topics and it had different perspectives of student athletes and coaches and parents. And they just detailed us more about um, more of the details on leadership. And uh, we also, uh, during one of our executive board weekly meetings, we had a reading and analysis of one of the chapters in a book about leadership. Um, so just kind of building this groundwork for a sense of leadership before we're going out and trying to spread this amongst our own um, sports. And then so we also really want to acknowledge areas where we can improve our school and our community, specifically from the athletic standpoint. And a really important thing that we thought of was recognizing student athletes and like the significance of their accomplishments because often they are downplayed or we only hear them in the morning during our announcements. So definitely um, we put some things in place that you guys will see later in our slideshow uh, that shows some of our progress. So our Ready program is really founded upon four pillars. Uh, first, visibility and spirit, just like trying to get more people involved in grow school spirit in our school. Um, community inclusion, you'll see a little bit later on through uh, the different ways that we participated in our community events. Service, again, a couple things we've done to really help outreach to the community. And then finally, as Natasha just said before, one of the most important parts, celebrating our athletes and community and all their accomplishments. Um, so over the next couple slides, we'll just see a couple of examples of things we've accomplished so far. Uh, so Micah and I recently just finished creating these schedules to put in our school hallways. It was definitely a learning process trying to use Ms. Souffle's uh, special graphic design tool, but we figured it out eventually. So basically what we're trying to do is represent every single spring sports, um, all, every, even the new ones, boys JV volleyball, we got flag football, boys lacrosse, girls lacrosse, softball, baseball, all of them, and even our unified sports as well. So we hung them up in the athletics hallway so everyone passes it. I think mostly everyone passes through that hallway eventually at one point or another in the day. So we're just increasing knowledge about home away games as well as tournaments that we may be participating in. And we're hoping to increase attendance at games, but also just like to make the hallways a little prettier, make people smile maybe if they pass by, and just to get that school community. So this is focusing on our visibility and spirit pillars. So this is one of the things we recently did last week. Um, we went to tents and we read a book um, and it was from K to fifth grade. And so uh, the 12 of us up there that you can see, we were all split up and we went to classrooms and we read our books. And a big part of it was after we asked if anyone had questions. Um, so I know from my experience in my fourth grade class, they kept bombarding me with questions until the bus was about to leave. Um, <laughs> so definitely a lot of questions about the school, but also a lot about sports, because I know I'm coming here from an association that's about athletics. So I'm detailing them information about track and stuff that I know about the other sports. So definitely trying to unify this aspect of athletes and our elementary schools you know and try to help encourage these aspects of athleticism even when they're young um, so that was this last week and that's for our community pillar so one big event that we held all the way back in December seems like ages ago but in our Marauder Dome we hosted the NJAC sportsmanship summit to focus on our service pillar and we've noticed that after COVID, there's been an increase in red cards, ejections, and like just bad sportsmanship overall. And this was like a long-standing program before COVID, but then it stopped because everything was shut down. So we, Ms. Souffle and a couple of other teachers in our uh, district worked to bring it back, and we were the hosts for it this year. So our RAID members kind of just did like team building tasks and led other students throughout other schools. Their leaders that they were chosen, they came here and we were like just breaking the ice, making everyone smile, laugh, and then to end off the day, we had a motivational speaker, Mr. Cornell Thomas, who just told us about like, the importance of mindset and positivity and how we could take that back to our individual sports. So this occurred last Wednesday on March 20th. We had our rising freshman night. And so um, I believe Gabby was talking about it earlier where the eighth graders were coming up to the high school and there was different stands. And so we had one for our um, group raid. And so we were talking to the rising freshmen about our athletic program. 
um, I believe there's studies about like I think about like 50% of the people in our school does some sort of sport. Um, so definitely spreading knowledge about the statistics the statistics we have about sports participation and definitely encouraging freshmen to join and make sure that uh, we're keeping up the numbers for our participation in sports. Um, and then one of our final projects so far that falls under the celebrate pillar of celebrating our athletes, um, we have created several posters to hang up in our hallways as well to really highlight a couple athletes that had really exceptional years. One of them is Natasha Redman, who's right here, who has the school record in almost every sprinting event. And then also up here we have Tyler Hagginson, who is a state championship, a uh, state champion in wrestling at 113 pounds. So we really just want to honor and celebrate them. So these posters will be going up in our hallways soon. So we just, just to wrap it up, like we're just this group of students just bridging the gap between like coaches, our school, our community, and we just want to promote like this sense of community in our school, but also in our town, and just show that like we're normal students too. Like we, like we're just putting ourselves out there, and we want to be included with everyone, and just making our town a little bit better. So, does anyone have any questions for us? Members, do you have any questions? <laughs> <laughs> that was Ms. Souffle's are you, edition. Are, are we gonna, you know, have a race with Natasha here? No. Who am I speaking to? Hold on. <laughs> Who wants to race Natasha? Anyone? No. I would put my head no. down like this. No. I, I have a question. So maybe it's a, a on your list for next year. But one, have you considered a reach down, right? and pull up program to mentor the middle school athletes? Uh, I think that's a great idea. I mean, we're all seniors, but uh, we can definitely, yeah, yeah, we can pass the torch along to our underclassmen and work with them. I think that's also important as like building the transition between middle school and high school and just know that they're like, they should be comfortable with us and we could be role models for them. And we lose so many, right? You already oh, no. are. You are. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I also have a question, have you, I know we celebrate the accomplishments, but have you looked at how to lead from the bench or lead when you're injured or you know, assisting your athletes that you know, are injured and suffering through a season? How do you, you know, help them? Yeah, so part of what we're trying to do is like we're promoting athleticism, but also recovery. Um, so part of our plan to help update the hallways was to help um, update the hallway next to the school trainer. Um, so definitely that's an aspect of it. So just bringing more awareness because there's so many times where people are like, Natasha, where's the school trainer? And I'm like, you don't know where it is. <laughs> so definitely just spreading more awareness of um, the availability of being able to go to our school trainers. Um, I know like within each of our programs, we have different awards. Um, like there's the, um, the, the Unsung Hero Award sorry, um, for track. And you know, a lot of times that does go out to somebody who's injured and who's going above and beyond to like to show up to meets and practices even when they're not expected to. Um, so I definitely think there's things in place right now within each sport, but that's definitely something um, that we're gonna continue to work on. I'll take my coach hat off now. And I just want to chime in. I had an opportunity, you know, to you know have a great conversations with Ms. Souffle about this wonderful organization. And as she pointed out, this is really their pilot year, right? So they are really trying to get their feet wet to get exposed, so the community around not only at the high school but the elementary knows who they are. And certainly, these ideas they're just looking to expand. And certainly, it's con con continue that outreach is really what that coat is the focus here. And I can't thank enough. Um, these young adults, you know, I certainly had an opportunity to have conversations with each of them and really that, you know, as Ms. Souffle pointed out, they're not only athletes, they're also students who happen to play sports. And that's really what this organization is all about, to really identify our students who have a voice and have that voice heard beyond the high school. So I can't thank you enough for your leadership. I can't thank you enough for your community service. And most of all, thank you for looking out for the larger community. You have done tremendous work, so thank you. So thank you very much for the opportunity to allow us to share with you some of the great things that the district is doing. 
And, um, you know, I'm certainly proud of the direction that the athletic program is going. And thank you to Dr. Bangia for the opportunity to um, establish some great parameters. And um, we've got a great group. But to Mrs. Narcisse's questions, you know, the, the, those are important. And, um, you know, to your point, you know, there's a great book called The Captain Class. And some of the greatest captains in the world have been the guys or the girls who have carried the water. So mm -hmm. leading from the bench is super important. Everybody knows their role. And um, so thank you for that comment. Thank you for a, a fantastic night. I'm heading off to the uh, boys wrestling banquet. And I'm, I am fairly confident that as soon as you put a pause on, the track team's gonna be out the door. So, <laughs> and I guarantee Natasha is probably gonna be the first, right, Agreed? Yeah. Yeah. No thank, so thank you very much. Thank you so thank much. You. Thank you. much, but we will move on to committee reports. Do we have, um, Ms. Aquino, anything from personnel? No report. And from Ms. Fenton for uh, p and No report. And then from Ms. Fitzgerald for finance and operations? No report. And from Ms. Melendez, anything from policy and governance? No report. Okay. Do we have um, any subcommittees? or parent-teacher associations liaisons? Any reports? I have Sanchor. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, Sanchor's read-a-thon brought in about over $8,000. Spring Book Fair totals gonna be about $9,500. Uh, the Girls and Boys Dance is uh, upcoming in April. The fifth grade dance just celebrated. Um, Assemblies, they had a theatrical performance based on a book for grades K through three, and they have a BMX bike thing coming in April in the parking lot, which would be pretty cool. And the SHSP will be giving one free book to every child in the school this week with their scholastic books. And they're also continuing efforts into a monthly newsletter as well as birthday gifts for all Sandshore staff, which has been very well received. And that's it. Any questions from the No? Seeing none, do we have any other subcommittee or parent liaison? I do. Oh, there we go. Um, I was at the planning board meeting Thursday, mm -hmm. March 14th, and their basic uh, discussion was Habitat for Humanity is going to start their building. Um, so we were getting few more houses it is only seven in total there's one four bedroom four three bedroom and um, two two bedroom so seven in total um, but the most important thing is they are looking for volunteers um, and it's a great way for students to come out get their hours in for whatever they would need their hours they also um, said that they would love for them to either help build Anybody 18 and older can build on their own. Under 18, if they have a parent with them, they could come build and they can sign their hours. They also need help in their stores. So if someone doesn't want to come out and do the manual labor, they can do a little bit of volunteering in their store. So I'm going to leave you with the woman's name. She would be happy to uh, give our kids some hours for this wonderful project. I'm sorry, it was 16 or older, need a parent, 16 to 18. It can't be under 16, no, sorry. Okay. Any questions from the board? I will say the Habitat for Humanity program is actually a really um, more than just building a house. The individuals um, who actually end up living in those homes have to qualify for a certain 
um, you know, income level, but they are actually there side by side working on yes, the houses. Yes, in order to gain a house from Habitat, you do have to have a, um, a specific income, but they actually have to go through the building and yeah. help building, and they have to learn how to maintain if they want to purchase one of their homes. So it's actually a really good learning experience and it, it keeps our community um, in, in an upward direction. Thank you. Anyone else? Other reports? In the high school, um, okay. in the high school I was in the meeting, uh, the parents meeting. Uh, they mentioned that uh, all of them are returning back next year uh, for continuation. Uh, of the work that they are doing. So they volunteer for next year again, and that's very nice because they have like a plan, a two years plan uh, to continue next year. Uh, they mentioned also, like the student, uh, Gabby, mentioned April April's 18, they have the international extravaganza, and is going, they're inviting the middle school also to join the high school, and it's going to be uh, 5 to 8 p.m. Uh, the parents already are working in the scholarship uh, for the students. They put together the committee uh, working uh, on the scholarship. And also, they are working in grants uh, for teachers. Uh, let's see what else. They mentioned June 14 as graduation date and June 7 for the senior picnic. And that's it. <coughs> All right, seeing none, we'll move on to board president report. Um, for my report today, I want to actually turn everyone's attention to, we've been making a, an effort here, um, with Dr. Bangia and the board, to make sure the community has information with actually regards to how the board operates, the policies and procedures of the board, um, as well as interacting, whether it be with the board members or where to go for questions. Um, there was an email that went out to the entire district um, this morning around 8 o'clock. So one of the things I wanted to highlight is up on the website is an entire section called Chain of Communications. So what does that mean? It means if you have a question about your child, where do you go? If, depending on what it, um, the questions with regards to if it's homework, we're going to direct you back to your teacher. If it's with regards to relationships with their peers, emotional support, we're gonna direct them back out to either their teacher or their school counselor. If that doesn't you know, work, there's an entire chart that explains where do you go? Do you go then to, you would go to the principal, do you go to their counselor? Then at what point do you reach out to the superintendent? Because I will say if you're reaching out to us board members, our job is to direct you back to the district. So it should go back to Dr. Bangia, who would then distribute the appropriate, you know, individuals, the appropriate building. Um, we want to just make sure that you guys have the tools as the public and as parents so that one, there isn't a delay in getting the answers and your questions resolved, but also transparency of what our role is, as well as making sure that your students are taken care of so that if they need to be seen you know, with regards to guidance, whether it needs to be, you know, handled by the, the principal. It's being handled more timely, not coming and getting delayed at all. So I just want to, you know, make sure that we're highlighting all of the tools that we're, you know, providing for the district. Do we have any questions from the board? Can you just um, say again where that will be on the website? So when you go onto the website, it'll, it says Board of Education. It's a drop down under the Board of Education site. So if you come um, to where you find the board members information or the board meeting information, at the very bottom, there's an entire section about the board. There's a section with um, FAQ and we're housing it on that page. Um, so. With reference to the chain of command or communication rather, it's also under about, there's a whole subsection that's called chain of communication. And certainly, the, you know, thank you for that. It's really about us making sure that families know who to go to. That's really, we are getting larger by the day here. And with that volume comes with a lot of responsibility. We want to make sure our families know who to go to. And with that, 
we'll move on to public comments on action items and on action items only. And I'm gonna have Mr. Geffert actually assist with this uh, portion. He's gonna let us know about what the public policy is for some of our discussions. Sure, just a reminder for the public and the audience that the board does operate under a board policy 167 called public participation in board meetings. I just wanted to highlight a couple quick points on that. Uh, the Board of Education recognizes the value of public in comment on educational issues and the importance of allowing members of the public to express themselves on school matters of community interest. In doing that, there are a couple points. One, public participation shall be permitted at the discretion of the presiding officer. In addition, all statements shall be directed to the presiding officer. No participant may address or question board members individually. The presiding officer also is tasked with several obligations, and they may interrupt, warn, or terminate a participant's statement when the statement is too lengthy, personally directed, <coughs> abusive, obscene, or irrelevant. So I just want to remind the audience that we do have obligations in conducting a public meeting. In addition, uh, the board president may request any individual to leave the meeting when that person does not observe reasonable decorum. And they may request the assistance of law enforcement officers in the removal of a disorderly person when the person's conduct interferes with the orderly progress of the meeting. Now, obviously, the board hopes that that never has to occur. But I do, as the board attorney, just want to remind the audience that we do have some options obligations and requirements that we have to proceed under. Thank you. So at this point, we'll open it up to public comment on the action items. So any member of the public may comment on any action item prior to board discussion. Please state your name and address for the record. And all comments must be respectfully presented. Abuse of them is obscene. Comments will not be tolerated. The mic is open for anyone who would like to comment on action items. Action items only. Martin Wells, Miller, 25 Woodcrest Avenue, Mud Lake, New Jersey. I saw we made a large contribution to the pension um, this cycle, I guess this month, for over $2 million. Is our pension fully funded for Mount Olive for all our employees, or are we underfunded? This is a mandate for every school district in New Jersey. This is not separate to Mount Olive. No, but the question is, are we fully funded for all of our staff that have committed themselves to Mount Olive? All, all of our participants contribute to the pension system. Okay, so that was the <laughs> participants' portion, not the district's portion? The district has to contribute. Every district in the state of New Jersey has to contribute to the PERS pension system. Okay, I understand that. Now, some districts are not fully funded. <clears throat> some are underfunded. My question is, where does Mount Olive stand with the pension system? It's a state pension system. It's, it's, it's the state pension system. It's all the same. Everybody's calculation, every school district's calculation is based on the same percentage rate that the, that the state of New Jersey strikes. All right, well, I'm just hoping that and it's ba And it's based on our staff members in the pension system. The calculation that they tell you to budget for is to take your second quarter of your IROC, which is your uh, quarterly contribution to the state of New Jersey, which is the everybody's pension, what they've contributed for that quarter, and it gets submitted to the state. Then they they give you an estimated rate to base your, excuse me, your contribution for the subsequent year. Okay, all right, thank you. Now the other question I have, I see that we're paying a reimbursing someone for legal fees. Um, it was on page one slash two of the bill payment. I don't recall anywhere seeing that voted upon or approved by the board to pay legal fees for ex-board members. So I'd like to find out when that was approved, by who, and when was that made aware to the public? Uh, and if that's happened to any other ex-board members, I'd like to find out that could be, someone could shoot me an email saying when was this authorized, we, by who? We will not be commenting on legal matters. Well, no, it, it's public record. It's, it says reimbursement on the invoices, so it doesn't matter legal matters. It's public record document now. If it wasn't, it would have been coded or classified differently on the bills. So the question is, when was it authorized by the full board to pay the legal fees? 
All right, because I attend 99% of all the meetings, and I've never seen it mentioned that they're recovering legal fees for board members. We won't be commenting on legal matters. Right, well, I would like to get a copy. Then I will open request a copy of the bill, and I'd like to find out when it was approved. You're, you're very much welcome to open request. All right, thank you. Anyone else? from the public who would like to comment on action items. Seeing none, we'll move on to approval of the monthly expenditures. Do I have a motion from uh, Ms. Fitzgerald? Yes. Uh, I'd like to move the approval of action items 6.1 through 6.8. Second. And a roll call, please. Mrs. Fitzgerald? Yes. Mrs. Melendez? I have a question um, regarding the tuition reimbursement. The amounts that are there are fully funded and is part of the 75%? Which number? Sure. She, she's referring to the 75%. Is that under the cap? What's paid out on this bills list tonight? is fully funded of the contractual obligation for the board to the EMO. Okay, yes. Mrs. O'Neill? Yes. Ms. Torzillo? Yes. Mr. Strelacci? Wherever the name Jody Bosch uh, appears, I abstain, yes, and everything else. Mrs. Aquino? Yes. Mrs. Fenton? Yes. Mrs. Figuera? Yes. And Mrs. Narcisse? Yes. And personnel action items, Mrs. Aquino? Upon the recommendation of the superintendent, I'd like to move action items 7.1 through 7.16. Second. We have any uh, questions? No? We'll take a roll call then, please, Mr. Stone. Mrs. Aquino? Yes. Mrs. Fenton? Yes. Mrs. Figuera? Yes. Mrs. Fitzgerald? Yes. Mrs. Melendez? Yes. Mrs. O'Neill? Yes. Mr. Rizillo? <coughs> yes. Mr. Strelacci? Yes. Mrs. Narcisse? Yes. And curriculum and technology, Mrs. Fenton. Upon the recommendation of the superintendent, I'd like to move curriculum and technology uh, action items 8.1 to 8.5. Second. Do you have any questions? Seeing none, we'll take a roll call. Mrs. Fenton? Yes. Mrs. Figuera? Yes. Mrs. Fitzgerald? Yes. Mrs. Melendez? Yes. Mrs. O'Neill? Yes. Mr. Torzillo? Yes. Mr. Strelacci? Yes. Mrs. Aquino? Yes. Mrs. Narcisse? Yes. And uh, we'll move to finance and operations, Mrs. Fitzgerald? Yep. Uh, upon the recommendation of the superintendent, I move for the approval of action items 9.1 through 9.2. Second. Do we have any questions on finance and operations? No? Seeing none, Mrs. Jones will take a roll call, please. Mrs. Fitzgerald? Yes. Mrs. Melendez? Yes. Mrs. O'Neill? Yes. Mr. Torzillo? Yes. Mr. Strelacci? Yes. Mrs. Aquino? Yes. Mrs. Fenton? Yes. Mrs. Figuera? Yes. Mrs. Narcisse? Yes. And we will move on to administrative action items. Um, Ms. Melendez? Open recommendation of the superintendent. I present the motion to approve administrative action items 10.1 through. 10.17. Second. Any questions from the board? Seeing none, we'll take a roll call, please. Mrs. Melendez? Yes. Mrs. O'Neill? Yes. Mr. Torzillo? Yes. Mr. Strelacci? Yes. Mrs. Aquino? Yes. Mrs. Fenton? Yes. Mrs. Figuera? Yes. Mrs. Fitzgerald? Yes. Mrs. Narcisse? Yes. And we'll move on to old business. Do we have any old business from the board? No. Do we have any new business from the board? No. With that, we will move to public comments. Students, parents, employees, and community members may comment on any item of is is interest pertaining to the Mount Olive School District. Please state your name and address for the record. All comments must be respectfully presented. Abusive or obscene comments will not be tolerated. And the one other piece I wanted to remind everyone is 
please understand that while it's an open forum, the board is not structured for a Q&A session. Therefore, you can address your questions to the board. All statements should be directed to the presiding officer. But we may not have conversation back and forth. And again, we ask that all comments be made in a civil and respectful manner and abusive and obscene language and comments will not be tolerated. Anyone who would like to come to the mic? Sorry, just one question. Um, Ms. Fenton, you talked about the House for Humanity. Um, I was wondering if I can get more information on that to share with other students and report back to Student Council about that. Absolutely, see me. Are you going to be here afterwards? Yes. All right, I will give you the information. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you, Gabby. Do we have any other members from the public? Good evening, Madam President, members of the board, and council. My name is Gita Vogel. I even brought my badge, but I didn't wear it. And I am the certified field representative from New Jersey Principals and Supervisors Organization, proudly representing and advising Moesa. I live at 48 June Grass Way, Panther Valley, in Alamuchi. I just had to say Alamuchi. Several years ago, when I was principal of a high school, I encountered on occasion staff members who weren't sure they were still meant to be in their positions any longer. Before I go on, much of this is philosophical, but there's a message in the content which you will hear. They were mainly teachers, but others in support positions felt the same way. With their permission and awareness, I set up mock interviews for their reigning positions and asked them to reapply. I reassured them that this was simply to determine what, if anything could be done in view of their tentativeness about their current function or change anything that could result in a more sustained, positive outlook. We were open and honest and accountable to each other. The process, though more detailed than what I am covering tonight, went well. All returned with renewed vigor and support from myself at all times. I believe that's what happened to you, Mr. Strelacci. No matter the circumstances surrounding your brief departure from the Mount Olive Board, you reapplied to return. Did you want a position? A question I ask members of my staff who participated in this renewal process. You did in fact <coughs> buy for your position successfully. You rejoined and repledged your oath with obvious vigor, intensity, and honesty given the man of stature that you represent. Nothing short of that would do. You were missed, sir. However, you are back where you belong, together with a community who is grateful. So too are the future giants of Mount Olive. We call them students. And you saw representation tonight. Mount Olive has a dynamic staff of leaders and educators committed to bringing about the best education possible. This should be everyone's promise, regardless of politics, differences, or affiliations. 
To conclude, perhaps if we, as if we could look at all boards of education in a more convivial way, such as teams, differences will result in an embrace of uniqueness, seemingly a less defensive sounding word than differences. Thank you, Mr. Stralacci, and thank you too to all the members who sit with you for welcoming back this extraordinary gentleman to an extraordinary district. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening, President Narcisse and members of the board, Dr. Bangia, and members of the public. Welcome back, Tony. I was unable to attend the March 11th meeting as I was convalescing. So I first want to thank the- Dr. Gales, <laughs> I know we all know you. Oh, I'm sorry. Antoine Gales, 13 Toll Oaks Lane. Thank Completely you. forgot, thank you. <laughs> So I want to I want to thank the uh, the ladies who uh, were kind enough to send me well wishes, some soup and some wonderful sweet bread, as I convalesced at home missing the meeting. But I did see the video replay, and it was brutal. So I understand the reason for finally enforcing some rules. So I, I will try to follow those rules so that uh, I don't get the wrap it up gavel. But since I was not here on March 11th, I would like to uh, just reiterate, I sent a, a letter to Ms. Jones. I don't know if it was read into the record or if it was shared with the board, but because I'm here now, I just want to read this first. And it just states, dear members of the Mount Olive Board of Education, as the only named defendants in the lawsuit involving Dr. Robert Zawicki, we believe we have the right to participate in any deliberations regarding this matter. Consequently, please inform us of any closed session deliberations related to the lawsuit so that we can express our views on the topics to be discussed, including any settlement offers, which we strongly oppose. And it's signed by myself, Bill Robinson, Dr. Giordano, Chris Zaire, and Anthony Stralacci. I also want to share very briefly that it's, I know it's, it's difficult when you're facing the public's vitriol, especially when you're being lambasted for things that sometimes you don't even have control over. But I didn't get to speak on your actions regarding the attorney, which, don't get me wrong, it's your right to do as the board attorney. I'm just concerned that it didn't seem to be done with any justification and without public comment before the board took its vote. And I know that there is some, some frustration from some board members about the process, which is why Mr. Shalachi did what he did. So my message is for the board members who may feel exacerbated and exhausted by the current state of affairs. To that, I'm gonna to say to you, Antoine, Bill, and Liz, remember that mantra? Remember a few short years ago when we had the courage to call out the wasteful spending on guest speakers. Over $2 million in learning platforms that weren't always all used. Mechanical hobby horses, high-end central office furniture, and rumors about children receiving benefits that they weren't entitled to. Parking passes 
and fees being paid. One year, I voted no on using bank cap in the budget. So did Liz. But on social media, Antoine, Bill, and Liz were living on an island of delusion, wrote one social media personality, not realizing that Bill actually voted for the budget. But it, they were so used to saying, Antoine, Bill, and Liz. As long as we called out the shenanigans, the acolytes were ready to pounce, to chill our voice in, a, in an attempt to make us fall in line. In 2023, Buddy Lake appeared, came into existence, and began sending information to our employers. That did not deter me or Bill or Liz. And I'm going to say, don't let that deter you. I encourage you to be the Antoine, Bill, and Liz of today. Continue to call out all of the misdeeds that you can without violating your oath of office. But don't be afraid of an ethics charge or being maligned on social media, but continue to support true North leadership principles. And finally, to the residents who are listening at home and here in the audience, what happened regarding that vote could not be a more eye-opening example of the importance of researching candidates and making a conscientious choice in who our Board of Education officials are. And I hope that many of us won't forget what took place in just the first 36 days of this new board's tenure. And you don't forget that when elections come up, because as you saw tonight, our children deserve better, and so do we. Thank you. Do we have anyone else from the public who would like to come up and speak? No? Just probably very quiet tonight. Okay, seeing none, we will move on to board and administration comments, and we'll just start over here. Mrs. O'Neill? No comments. <coughs> Mrs. Fitzgerald? I just want to say um, a big thank you. The past two weeks have been a lot of events in the district, mm -hmm. a lot of events. So we have. The folks here have seen each, a lot of each other, but also a huge thank you. They're from science fairs to Rock of Ages to awards to ceremonies, just a huge thank you to all, the entire community, all of the volunteers, all of the organizations who are doing all of this on top of their day jobs. Um, just it took every single one of those organizations, I'm sure, countless hours, and so really appreciative of all of the time and effort that goes into every one of those events. Uh, we were tired just from attending those. I can't imagine how tired all of you are just from actually putting them on. So just uh, really appreciative of, of all of that time and effort. And Ms. Melendez. <laughs> well, I echo Ms. Fitzgerald. Uh, a lot of activities. And thank you uh, to all the students and all the staff, but also to the community that support our students and go to those functions that they prepare with so much love and effort for all of you. Um, thank you also to the community to attend the strategic plan. It was a well-attended event, and thank you so much because that's what we need. We need your voices, we need your ideas uh, to put together a very good strategic plan for our beloved school district. Um, uh, we also went to the Unsung Heroes, a couple of us uh, have the privilege uh, to be with our student, Jonathan Liu, um, at that event at CCM. It was really nice, and, and we're so proud of all the students here also. A, another thing, um, a robotics competition has, it was in Warren Hills this weekend. I couldn't attend, but I heard high of them, both teams, uh, they made the alliances, the, the final alliances, so that's really good. Uh, they did the best. Uh, science fair was huge, um, very nice, um, well attended, the parents, the projects, the students, 
it's unbelievable how much talent uh, do we have in our district at Rock of Ages. Uh, we tune, we sing, <laughs> it was really nice. And final but not least, Marora Jambori was fantastic. Please um, support our girls flag football team. They are amazing. And the next home game, so for you, all of you at home and here to attend, is April 18, and will be as against uh, Essex Tech. So all of you are invited. Uh, usually we do it, we have it at the dome, unless they decided to, to do in another place, but yes, that's it. <laughs> Mrs. Aquino. Uh, two quick things. I want to give a shout out and a big thank you to our two unsung heroes, Jim Caprice and James Reney, who, our, who are our district carpenters and for putting together that magnificent set um, for the play this weekend. It was outstanding. Um, and we'll look forward to more beautiful things from them until uh, Mr. Strelacci decides to donate um, the new digital curtain. Digital curtain. <laughs> um, and also, I just want to thank our uh, board president and our superintendent for the placement of the podium. Thank you for doing that. <laughs> That's it. Thank you, Ms. Mrs. Benton. Um, I don't think I could say any more than uh, the three you ladies did, so I'm just going to say ditto, and like, we are amazing. Thank you. Now we'll circle over here, Mr. Zello. Uh, same thing, the Rock of Ages blew me away, so that was awesome, and I want to thank the community members who came out to the strategic planning. Thank you. And Ms. Figueroa. I share a lot of the same senti sentiments that many have mentioned already. But I wanted to thank and commend the student athletes who were here this evening, um, thank the community. They came to strategic planning. It was nice to see such a good turnout. And hopefully everybody fills out their Google form to further that uh, discussion. Um, it's been a busy couple weeks with the science fair, the Unsung Heroes, the Rock of Ages, which you know, if you have, I'm sure you've heard how incredible that was. And the uh, Harlem Wizards game yesterday was a lot of fun, a lot of family fun. Yes, thank you. Um, first of all, I'd like to thank Mrs. Vogel. You're very, very kind. But mm. just remind everybody, I'm, I'm one of nine up here, and that's it. Second of all, I'd like to thank Mr. Stansbury for coming back for the first time to the second, watch the play for the second time. That's how good the play was, right? The play was, yeah. it was awesome. Ter it terrific was really play. Awesome. First time he's done that. Um, I'd like to thank our superintendent. Uh, she has really involved our community, uh, and that's just a, a very big plus for us. She, she started the uh, Citizens Advisory Committee. Uh, we had the, the strategic planning uh, event last week, and I want to thank you for getting for all you're doing with the community because it's very vital for us to be involved with the community. Thank you. Oh, do you want? Just to just to echo the sentiments about strategic plan, thank you for those who attended the kickoff meeting last Tuesday. We had over 70 participants. Um, our liaison that we're working with, TMI Masking Group, was very impressed with the feedback and the honest conversation. And certainly um, the next point of emphasis is our core planning team. So for those who are interested in participating that, in that, we sent out a Google form last week. Um, if you did not receive it or you'd like to pass out more information, just simply go to our district website. There'll be a pop-up window with all the information. We request that you submit your interest by tomorrow because we are limited to about to 25 to 30 people to be involved in that process. But once again, um, at going uh, Mr. Strelosky's um, point of emphasis, this is really about building community consensus on the goals that they foresee for the next five years. So certainly, the more people we involved, the, the better the plan's gonna be. But certainly, if you can't join our core planning team, we will be sending out surveys by the end of the week. So thank you. And I'll close it out. Um, I mean, everybody said the same thing. It has been, every year we go into the spring, it is busy. There's so many activities. We just wrapped up our winter sports. I'm so excited to hear that we have a boys volleyball team. Um, Rock of, you know, Rock of Ages, always, always this amazing job. Not, not just from the 
singers and actors, but like Mrs. Aquina said, the stage crew building the set, the pit band, the lighting, the sound, there's so much that goes into those productions behind the scenes. Everybody is working hard, they're a big family. Um, please also the students, like we heard, please sign your students up for the reunification drill. Um, we, it's a very big planning undertaking and there's community members from across the state actually coming to watch and take notes. Science fair was amazing. Um, I love to see you know all of our student athletes, but to go beyond to recognize that they are so much more than just an athlete. The things that they take away from being on their court, being on a field, being on a track, they are amazing human beings. And the one other you know point is please sign up for the strategic planning. Uh, please, we want everyone's input. We want a you know, a diverse, you know, cut of the community coming forth, helping actually plan the strategic planning from the, the district. It's not just, you know, oh, you're going to do this and we're not going to take action. It's actually the planning of what direction we want our school to go in. The district, the community has a major in, input and voice that we want to hear. Um, from that, do I have a motion to go into confidential closed session? So moved. And second. do we have a second? We have a second? Yeah, I second. Yes. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, be it resolved that the board will meet in confidential session for the purpose of discussing um, personnel, matters of attorney client privilege, pending or anticipated litigation, people matters, and I think that's all we have. Do I have a roll call on that? Mrs. Or, Aquino? Yes. Mrs. Fenton? Yes. Mrs. Figuera? Yes. Mrs. Fitzgerald? Yes. Mrs. Melendez? Yes. Mrs. O'Neill? Yes. Mr. Orzillo? Yes. Mr. Strelacci? Yes. Mrs. Narcisse? Yes. And we will go into confidential closed session. Be it further resolved that matters discussed in confidential session be disclosed to the public when the reason for confidentiality no longer exists. Action may be taken.
Here. Mrs. Fenton? Here. Mrs. Figuera? Here. Mrs. Fitzgerald? Here. Mrs. Melendez? Here. Mrs. O'Neill? Here. Mr. Rizzillo? Here. Mr. Stralacci? Here. Mrs. Larcis? Here. And I'd like to read a resolution and then we'll take a vote on it. Um, it will be resolution 10, uh, action item 10.18. And it is to authorize the business administrator for, to proceed with the preparation of an RFP for specifications in advertisements for special education legal counsel. Can, uh, do we have an, a motion? I'll so move. moved. Second. A second. Is there any discussion? No? We'll take a roll call, Ms. Jones. Mrs. Aquino? Yes. Mrs. Fenton? Yes. Mrs. Figuera? Yes. Mrs. Fitzgerald? Yes. Mrs. Melendez? Yes. Mrs. O'Neill? Yes. Mr. Orzillo? Yes. Mr. Stralacci? Yes. Mrs. Norsi? <laughs> yes. Oh, did you? Well, let's, I have to go back. Yeah. I'm sorry. Uh, Mrs. Jones? Um, Mrs. O'Neill would like to abstain. Yes. Thank you. Sorry. Right. Anyone else? No. Nope. Okay. So the item passes and can I then have a um, motion to close out this meeting and go home? So moved. Second. Second. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. 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 Aye